I'm Ronnie Franken. Uh, I'm Education Manager, Visual Arts, but I'm also teaching procedural modeling in Houdini in the first year. We started teaching uh, procedural content uh, about seven years ago, I think, uh, in our games program. Uh, and at a certain point we noticed that we started to develop a certain skills and knowledge that was quite unique, not only to our program, but actually international. And then at a certain point we thought, well, we have so many connections, we have our alumni in great places, why not organize a conference around the subject of procedural content? Uh, and that's basically how it started uh, three years ago. So this year we organized it for the third time, uh, and we plan to do it next year and the year after as well. My name is Anastasia Opara. I'm a procedural artist at Embark. It is a newly found studio in Stockholm. So my name is uh, Josef Benzegadi and I work at uh, Ubisoft Paris Studio. I'm Simon Verstraten and I work at Exxon as an environment and technical artist. Uh, so I'm Louis-Philippe Clavet working at uh, Oblique FX in Montreal. Hi, I'm David Foss. Uh, I work at PUBG, uh, special projects team. My name is Simon Avers. I'm a student here at uh, Berry University of Applied Sciences in Breda. It's the, uh, the ability to create assets, levels, complete games or parts of it automatically by a certain set of rules. Uh, and I think that might sound very technical and sometimes abstract or maybe even mathematical. Uh, it is actually a quite a creative process. So I think it's really uh, a unique process also. Uh, and it offers a lot of unique possibilities. Not only to optimize stuff and make things faster and more efficient, but also to come up with new ideas, new concepts that are basically impossible without proceduralism. It's like a system or a tool where you can control it, you make rules in it, and another person, like another artist, can uh, change values and parameters in this tool to create something new out of it. Like we can have a bridge tool, where you can draw bridges in Unity and just based on the line, bridges are created. Instead of having manually built bridges, we can now uh, draw bridges which are instantly uh, updated in Unity. So procedural workflows for me is, uh, is about finding the, the procedure, the, the recipe of what you're doing. So. Um, I worked in the games industry as an artist for uh, six years and during that time um, manually sculpting, manually placing and creating, uh, you sort of find these patterns where you, you see yourself doing this, I've, I've done this before uh, a million times, I'm doing it slightly different this time because of the situation and the context of uh, where I'm making this bench or this tree or this sci-fi corridor piece um, and uh, trying to find the patterns that dictate the changes I make in my uh, artist artistic uh, work um, and boiling that down into procedures and uh, modifiers and manipulators in a um, recipe to create this asset. Having tools that are flexible enough to create uh, worlds and content in a, an automatized way, which doesn't mean we will leave the content like this, then level designers and other people might use this content to work on it by hand, but it's a, a way to create content automatically, sort of, faster. So there's like a, there's like a, a loop of creation. You're translating, um, translating your ideas into rules, and then putting an algorithm together with those rules, trying to create and recreate multiple variations of, let's say, an asset or any processes that you would like to do over and over again to get the best result possible. And if you can put some design intentions into this. So if you can uh, let the designer be the, 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 like the conductor of this creation, that's even better. I think that like generative design and putting the designer at the center of the creation uh, with proceduralism is a great tool to get, to get great content, great assets. So uh, on a game that I worked on for three and a half years, uh, we found ourselves um, uh, competing uh, or battling it out with the designers a little bit. Um, Sci-fi corridors and designers were putting uh, workstations um, 
elements where the user was interacting with something. Uh, this panel, control panel, would open this door over there. So to telegraph the player that this thing opens that thing, artists needed to create a wire and uh, lay it on the ground realistically from A to B. Um, designers would then change their minds and put the control panel there and uh, then tell the artists, you need to do this again. Uh, and when you see this happening 300 times, it's time to make a procedural tool. So uh, what I did was I, using Houdini uh, and a Houdini engine plugin, uh, we were able to do a prototype in uh, the project engine in the editor um, so that it was real-time pathfinding and finding um, its way around the 3D environment. Um, and then using physics to drop it down. So uh, designers uh, changing their minds would have no impact on this. But it also allowed us to dress the environment with thousands of cables, if we can render it. Uh, so it doesn't cost anything in our time anymore. I mean, the, I think on a spectrum, the alternative to um, proceduralism would be brute force. I mean, there are many in-betweens, uh, but if you try the brute force approach, it, it could be very effective for some specific uh, tasks, but other tasks will scream proceduralism. Uh, we recently work on many, many uh, crowd shots, uh, which uh, you need proceduralism, like you, you cannot animate every single character in a crowd shot or in an arena. Uh, so you need tools to uh, put everything in motion uh, in a way that is realistic and uh, feels, uh, does not feel life, uh, lifeless. What I enjoy the most about procedural workflows is the amount of iterations that can be done. So you create a system and you can easily change it without a lot of time being wasted on it. So in my case, I've created a procedural environment uh, based on what uh, Far Cry did. And it's a great tool because if the terrain needs to be changed or there has to be a different tree, the tool just works like that. And there doesn't need to be like 50 people working two days to change the system. I can just uh, change a few buttons or uh, change a few settings and it's done. There's no extra work that needs to be in. So in this case, it's a lot cheaper, better, and it looks even better sometimes because it's based on rules what uh, nature has rather than just someone trying to uh, add an asset based on the picture. So in a way we're trying to democratize tool creations when we want to enable content creators to make tools by doing what they already do best, making awesome stuff. <laughs>